The Lord be with you. Well, I want to talk a little bit about this idea of blessing today. And I think there's a couple of reasons that this is particularly appropriate. Number one, because we are currently in the season of Eastertide, uh, at least when this video is being recorded. Uh, and Easter, the resurrection of Jesus, um, and what that means for the church, what that means for the world, is a time of intense blessing. God blessing us, uh, but also us being a blessing as a witness to the resurrected Christ, to the rest of the world. Uh, and also because um, it seems to me that there just is an awful lot of cursing going on in the world right now. Uh, I think we see this um, internationally with wars and um, different uh, tensions going on right now. I think we see it across our country. Uh, and I think we see it in our own personal lives. It has become all too easy to curse somebody uh, because of our differences. Uh, we curse people because they are different in the way that they think about the pandemic. Uh, we curse people because they are different in the way that they think about their own bodies. Uh, we curse people because they are different looking than us. They have different beliefs than us. We curse people because of their different political views from us. Uh, and we certainly curse people just uh, even sometimes in the church because uh, we're of a different denomination than somebody else, or we differ on a certain theological point. Uh, cursing becomes all too easy, and unfortunately, cursing becomes cyclical. It actually takes on a life of its own, and it can sort of drown our own personal spirituality as well as the spirituality of the community that we are in. And I think the only way to break a cycle of cursing and the, the power and the, the tendrils of cursing is to begin blessing. Uh, we actually see this in the beginning of the Bible, the first 11 chapters, this kind of primordial, primeval history of humanity begins good. You know, the first two chapters are about God declaring things to be good, about this, this world being rich and fertile and lives being relational and flourishing. Uh, and then by chapter three, with that disobedience, uh, we begin to see things unravel, and as God sort of uh, doles out responsibility and judgment to the man, to the woman, to the serpent, uh, this is where we see cursing begin. Um, cursed be the ground. Uh, cursed be the serpent. Uh, we start to see these curses take effect and start to take that downward gravitational spiral. We see uh, the family unit begin to break up. We see brother kill brother. We see society begin to break up. And all of it culminates with that uh, story of the Tower of Babel. Uh, where uh, the languages are mixed up and people go their separate ways. And uh, what God does to sort of get out of that downward spiral of cursing uh, is he chooses somebody to form a nation for himself, Abraham. And notice how he begins his call with Abraham right away in chapter 12, uh, the first three verses. It says, Yahweh said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. God breaks the cycle of cursing by blessing. And notice God isn't the only one who blesses. He doesn't put a corner on the market. He doesn't say this is a divine activity only. God says, I will bless you, Abram, so that you then can be a blessing to others. The beginning of God's people, the beginning of this covenantal relationship, the beginning of what it means to model God in this world starts with blessing. 
Uh, so blessing, what I want to talk about with blessing uh, kind of goes in line with um, what our denomination is doing right now. Um, this is a season where we begin to think about this idea of BLESS. Uh, BLESS is an acronym for us. So every letter, uh, all five, B, L, E, and both S's, uh, they mean something specific. And this is what we call um, an intentional evangelism initiative. Now, uh, full disclosure, that word evangelism sometimes creates some post-traumatic stress in a lot of us. Uh, we have gleaned evangelism, sort of uh, seen evangelism used as a way to coerce people into believing something that they don't want to believe, but we want them to believe. So sort of forcing your faith, forcing your belief systems onto somebody else. Uh, that is not uh, where the covenant is coming from when they say um, an intentional evangelism initiative. Uh, that's why they have adopted this acronym, BLESS, because it is less about the other people and more about us. Uh, what posture are we starting from? What is our heart? What are we supposed to be doing as the people who initiate this? And uh, we want to bless. We don't want to coerce. We don't want to strong arm. We don't want to... Um, uh, brainwash people. We literally want to be a blessing to people. Uh, so what do we mean by that? What is the first letter in that? What does the B mean? Uh, the B in the acronym is begin with prayer. And that may sound uh, super, super simple. Uh, it may even sound almost uh, too easy, uh, or like, why do you even need to do this? Is this just spiritual language? Like, does it really have any effect on anything? And I want to argue it does, and you need look no further than Jesus to see how important prayer was in all of his earthly ministry. So in Luke's gospel, uh, as it begins talking about Jesus's baptism, which in all the gospels, that's where his public ministry uh, officially begins, is at his baptism. Uh, Luke's gospel says in chapter 3, when all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, saying, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Interesting that we might wonder, why in the world does Jesus pray when he's being baptized? Why would Jesus even need to pray? But what's interesting in this dynamic of what happens there is it's almost like uh, Jesus speaks to the Father. That's what prayer is. And in response, the Father sends the Holy Spirit to anoint him and to empower him. And then the Father speaks back to Jesus as if Jesus initiated the conversation with prayer. And then the Father answered in an audible voice that other people heard. Uh, you are my son. I'm pleased with you. I'm pleased that you're praying right now. I'm pleased that you're being baptized right now. I'm pleased for what this moment means in the beginning of your public ministry. So clearly, prayer was important in the life of Jesus. Just a couple of chapters later, in uh, chapter 6, it says, One of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray. And he spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to himself, and he chose 12 of them, whom he also designated apostles. So interesting, even before Jesus takes the next step to uh, pick the 12 people who will follow him, the 12 people who are going to carry on ministry after him, it seems like this could be very simple, right? He could pick the most popular people. He could pick the most talented people. He could pick those charismatic people that stand out in the community, but it, Jesus actually prays before he makes a selection. And it doesn't say he just says a quick prayer. It says he spent all night in prayer to his Father. 
to make sure that he knew exactly who needed to be picked. When we say uh, the B in bless is begin with prayer, we're saying uh, that if we want to be a blessing to people, if we want to see people get blessed by God, then we need to begin praying for some people. So uh, one of the things that we have done at Zion over the course of Lent, uh, and we collected these uh, blessed cards uh, on Palm Sunday so that we can churn them in at our annual meeting uh, and so that that can get churned over to the denominational annual meeting and that people can be praying for all of these people that we're praying for. Uh, so whether you are in our community, whether you participated in that or not, uh, I'm going to challenge you in this video, sit down and think of three to five people who come to mind, whether they're people that you know, whether they're people that you don't know, but you see them on a regular basis. Maybe uh, it's a cashier uh, at a place that you go to all the time. Maybe it's a barista. Maybe it's a waitress or a waiter. Uh, maybe it's somebody that you work with. Uh, maybe it's somebody in your extended family. Uh, maybe it's a neighbor, whoever. People that you think need to be blessed by the Lord, pick three to five names, write them down, and commit to praying for them over the course of this year. And let's just see what God is going to do. Uh, we want to begin with prayer. We want the Spirit to be moving in this because we know that when we pray, God can move people, prepare people, prepare us in ways that we can't even anticipate. Uh, one of my favorite prayer stories, and again, we've done lots of videos on prayer on this channel, so I'm not going to belabor this, but one of my favorites is in Genesis 24, uh, Abraham has to send uh, his servant Eliezer back to his home country to pick a bride for his son Isaac. He wants to make sure that Isaac marries a woman that isn't going to lead him uh, away from the God who called Abraham. Uh, so he doesn't want somebody who worships these foreign gods in the land that Abram's living in. So he sends Eliezer back, and Eliezer knows this is an important deal. So Eliezer starts praying, and he says, uh, Lord, I need you to bring the right woman to me. And it says, before he even finished praying, Rebecca showed up on the scene. Hey, we pray so that God will bring the right people. We pray so that God will pray, prepare those people to hear just the right thing at the right time. We pray so that God will prepare us to be a proper witness and testimony for him so that we can bless more people and they can experience the blessing of God for themselves. Now, there are more letters to come, more letters to talk about in this acronym. But until then... May the peace of God and the blessing of God be with you. Amen.